Uh, Christy has a passion project, passion work she's doing right now related to current events. Um, but I met her, you know, recently we talked about this and I wanted her to share her story and maybe hopefully people who are, you know, uh, people can help if they're willing to. Uh, I guess I'm sharing too much already, but Christy, kind of do your intro first uh, from where you started to what you do now currently. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, I, I'm a, a native Texan. I'm from Texas and I grew up in uh, outside of uh, Fort Worth in Weatherford. I did go outside of uh, Texas for a little bit of high school and, and uh, college. And so I did graduate in uh, elementary education and taught school for a couple of years before I started having my children and stayed home with them. Uh, and on and off, I did subbing and long-term subs and uh, Took on a contract for a little bit in between, but mostly I uh, was uh, raising my children during that time frame. Um, and I have three. I have a daughter and two sons, and they're all grown now. Uh, but as they were leaving the home, I was thinking, okay, do I where? What do I need to do in my life? And this kind of came to me in the fact that my daughter went on a church mission. Uh, she decided to do that, and it she went to Ukraine. And she served in the Kiev, Ukraine area. And so she, uh, in that time, it wasn't short. So she got to learn everything about the culture, the people. She stayed with, uh, you know, with lots of people there, uh, just uh, working with them with different uh, service projects and teaching uh, free English classes and all kinds of ways. Uh, of course, she was there for our church too. So she had opportunities to visit with people about our church, but uh, gained many friendships there because of that. And because of her, I also uh, was able to connect with these people thanks to social media now, you know, at that time, because she served in 2015 to 2016. And so we had all of those uh, things in place at that time to be able to connect with people. I uh, did video calls and things like that, just to meet different people over there. And I've always been interested in different cultures. And anyway, so it was, it was kind of almost just speaking to me to connect with these people and know more about their culture, because I didn't know much about Ukraine before she went there. Mm -hmm. uh, they fed me meals at the home cooked meals. And I got to learn about the culture of Ukraine. We stayed for three weeks mm -hmm. and uh, toured all over of her mission of Kiev, uh, which included quite a few cities, even out, out you know, outside of Kiev. Uh, and, you know, I already did love it from her experience through vicariously through her, but I, and, and meeting people uh, online, but it was not the same as going there in person was just an experience. I saw them, their shifts are longer than ours. They'd work all day, come home, take care of their families, feed them their meals, and then stay up all the hours of the night hand making Ukrainian uh, traditional crafts, hand painted things, hand sewn things, you know, embroidered things, all of that kind of thing. And I thought, you know, I guess I could help by uh, selling their things here. So I had a pretty good base of people and I did a lot of adding in of people to that so that they would be, see the interest of it. And, and they, I sold a lot of things for them and it helped. Mm -hmm. And I was getting back these stories of, Oh, that set of uh, things, uh, little things I made and you sold for me, that helped me to be able to pay my bills this month. And uh, and so I started doing this full time and I did was not receiving anything for myself. Mm -hmm. It was a business for Ukraine and that was it. It was functioning pretty much as a nonprofit for six years. Uh, and in that time, I went back in 2018, met more people and added in more vendors and met them in, and traveled all over Ukraine at that point to see them. And, and I wanted them to feel that because they are. And so I uh, brought back lots of things with me on that trip and sold all of it for them. And the, I got more feedback of as soon as you left, when you bought all those ties for me to sell, it's there because some lady makes handmade ties for men out of traditional Ukrainian fabric. And she said, I was able to pay for my, my mother's hospital bill the next day when she went into the hospital unexpectedly. And the amount that you gave me was the exact amount that I needed to pay the bill. So I just knew that this was a, like a, just a higher calling for me to do this. And I didn't really understand the purpose over the six years completely. 
So I pray about things and my answers were always to keep going with it. And so I kept going with it, not completely understanding it all. So now it was part of our family and even more personal. So when that war broke out, that was very personal for me. These were friends, close friends of mine. I had stayed in their homes. They had fed me meals. They treated me as family when I was there. And so I felt I had to help. And then I understood the purpose of what I'd been doing for the last six years was then lifted to something even higher of the next thing that I was going to be doing, which was people started sending me donations to help people. And I was getting people to uh, the edge of the border so that they could cross over and get away for safety, uh, mothers and children, young children. And, and these are people I could connect with and ask, how are you doing? Do you need a driver to take you? All the, do you want to get out of Ukraine? Do you need some money for food and clothing for your children and you and, and those types of things? And it was, you know, just, it was heart wrenching, but it was feeling good that I had these connections that I could help somebody there. Um, then that's kind of where it's been this whole year. But shortly after the war, I connected with another family that was doing the same thing within Ukraine and through mutual friends, they said, you guys really should connect you're doing the same thing and you could combine your efforts. And so we did. And we helped even more people. We helped, uh, like I said, people that uh, were having to hide and had no way to escape. We helped people escape from occupied areas. Even in Mariupol, we helped a family that was trapped for three and a half months in their apartment and couldn't get out. And finally, they escaped in the wee hours of the night and took seven days to get out of Mariupol at all these block posts and finally got to a safe area where we could get them and get them to a, a, a town where they could be safe. And they needed to start over. They needed food. They needed clothing. They needed everything and a place to stay. Uh, they had to immediately start looking for jobs and we were trying to help them with that. And um, so we are do doing just that and have been. Uh, last spring, we officially became quickly, pretty quickly after the war. And that alone is a miracle. So I knew that that was what we were supposed to be doing. They're like, oh, I've been waiting six months for my uh, nonprofit status. So that's what we've been working on this last year is helping people that are coming. Uh, we did a little bit of the helping people leaving Ukraine. I got people to different countries outside of, you know, in Europe and other places. And then I also got people to Canada and to the U.S. with the U for You when that uh, program, when that opened up, like they just don't have a lot that's taken care of there. Mm -hmm. It's in a church building or a, a school building that they're sleeping on a gym floor. And they may uh, have at the beginning had a little bit of help with some nonprofits that were providing food or things like that, but then they pulled out. So mm -hmm. then they have no food at the shelter. And there's not a lot of governmental, you know, there's nothing really in place for these people with the government that are getting displaced like that. So they rely on our organizations to help people gotcha. like. Gotcha. So okay. you, know, you, sh you shared your shift and passion, right? But what was the critical point that triggered for you that made that shift possible. Like, hey, I'm going to go to this full time. Yeah, I, I just felt so compelled to help my friends. I, I, I don't have that going on here, and I've got things to do. And I just, within me, uh, I knew that I could not just turn my back on them mm. and say, well, that's that's you know, that's your life there. I knew that I had the ability to do that. I had run the, my business for six years and had all the ways of sending money. Can we find out if we can get medicine this way? And it's just a, just a basic human connection of like, I care for these people and I want to help. So with that being said, you know, you're helping people now, you obviously, most of it, you know, it wasn't probably mentioned, but it's a nonprofit organization you're running. So how, who can you, you know, who can, you know, who would you like to connect to or maybe how can they help? If you are, you know, uh, able to donate, that would be great. 
uh, if, I mean, even if it's $5, you know, that helps because that can feed somebody for a day. I do not, as an organization, have I have chosen not to send supplies from the U.S. to there for two reasons. And it really just doesn't make any sense to do that because everything can be bought within Ukraine and it should be. We need to stimulate their economy and continue to help them financially there by buying within Ukraine. And and so it doesn't help for us to have things from here. And then it, even if it was just used goods, like used clothing or things like that, that I could send, I'm going to have to pay thousands of dollars to ship those things there. And that money could be used further by just getting it to Ukraine. And I do have my trusted people there that are purchasing those things. I'm getting the money to them. And I know them personally. They're my team. They're my close friends. They're like family to me. These are close. Uh, I, when I went there in September and October for a month, this is who I was with and I spent my time with. Right. So there's lots and lots of feedback of how that's all being used. So if anybody's wondering if I make a donation, how do I know that it's going to the right sources and, and things? Because I am the direct source to that source <laughs> and I get complete feedback and I uh, post those the feedback on uh, social media. Another way that people could help uh, is they, if they're, or their corporations or businesses that they work for, a lot of people have a matching donation program. And so if you make a donation, uh, then it could be matched with your company. I've done a lot of work trying to get our, ourselves on all the different platforms. Uh, one is providing a better shelter and things like that. They're running out of space and they ran out of space a long time ago in the shelters. So then there's people that are uh, coming to these Western cities and they have nowhere to stay. And so we'd like to get them up off the street if they're there uh, or in really uh, bad conditions of where they're staying. We'd like to get them into something that's a little bit better. Like uh, there was a family that was bombed out of their home in Kharkiv, came to the Western part to for safety. And it's a mom, dad, uh, a grandmother and a 14 year old boy. And they needed a place to stay. They were staying in some subpar place that didn't even have heat for the winter or electricity. Um, and other ways to help would be, you know, you can contact me if you would like to volunteer on our board or and just spend time making phone calls, emails, and that for our organization. There's lots of things that could be just volunteer work as well. Yeah, I'll post uh, her information uh, with the clip. So you, you'll be seeing with uh, videos. So if you can help or would like to help, you can if you can reach out to her or go to our website, donation, all that stuff. Um, and I don't know if there are going to be any events. I'm sure that stuff will be available on the website. So go, you know, go to the website, check it out on social media like you shared. I mean, uh, I guess, you know, next question is pretty much already answered. You know, what inspires you to get up and do what you do every day? Well, for me, that's just uh, the... The satisfaction of knowing that I'm helping other people every day. It could be professional, you know, helping other people, whatever that case is, or personal in your personal or personal life. Well, I would say, um, especially in my type of work, is to make sure that because at times I have not done this and I've learned the hard way, is to make sure that you're always doing those things to not get burned out. I could you know, overwork myself, which I have at times. Mm -hmm. So I've got to make sure I'm doing all those self-care things and everybody's that's like the buzzword <laughs> self-care, you know, is, uh, been for a while now. We've, we've got to make sure we're exercising, eating, right, going to our doctor visits and taking care of our health. You know, all of those things are so important more than you even think that they are. And, and that not in the health realm too, taking care of the psychological care too health uh, with your psychological care, emotional and psychological care is so important as well. So just kind of that whole package of self-care, I think for me, it, it kind of bleeds into both sides of things of, of personal and business. Uh, you'll, you'll perform better. You'll be able to function better. You'll be able to do more if you do the self-care uh, things. I, I have learned that through this process and through this year, because I could easily just keep going, keep going, keep going. And I have uh, to the point of where I'm just 
drop dead exhausted. <laughs> it is, it is, you know, everything works together, you know, your mental and physical health people take, yeah. take one over the other. No, you got to do all, all. Yeah. <laughs> human, and we have to do those things for ourselves to keep going. Same thing is just, you know, I've got to take care of myself and keep myself in good health in every, in every aspect in order to be able to help others. I just, Exactly. That's what people, even in financial realm, but yeah, that could be a whole different, uh, you know, <laughs> right there. Uh, and I'll be sharing all the information, like I said, uh, about uh, Christine and her mission and everything. If you can help her uh, provide support. Yeah, I, really quick. I guess I'll just mention my website name, www.ukraineunlimited.org. 